is the first of two videos and it's a little experiment. No, I'm not going to mix some strange chemicals and blow the house up. No, people say that it's difficult to ask questions in English. So I thought today we could play a guessing game. If you're new to my channel, hello, I'm Rachel and welcome to Smile English Stories where you can listen to English in lots of different contexts. If I speak too quickly or too slowly, you can change the speed in YouTube. Do you remember Hedgy? Oh yeah! My clever, intelligent, my very smart little hedgehog. <laughs> Hedgy is thinking of a place, so somewhere, or a person, so someone, somebody, or an object, something. Games have rules. So Hedgy can only say yes or no. And we, you and me, we can ask Hedgy up to 20 questions. So not more than 20 questions. If we guess in less than 20 questions, then we win. Yay! And if we guess in more than 20 questions, then Hedgy wins. <laughs> okay, Hedgy, are you ready? So let's go. Mm, my first question, question number one is, is it an object? Okay, it's not an object. So question number two, my second question is, is it a person? Oh, it's not a person either. Okay, so question number three, my third question, is it an animal? Ah, it's an animal. Hmm, but what sort of animal? Hmm, question four, my fourth question. Can it fly? Ah, it's an animal that can fly. Hmm, so my fifth question, question number five is, can it swim? Ah, it can swim too, so it could be a fish, flying fish, or it could be a bird. Ah, I think it must be a bird. Mm. So, question number six. My sixth question, Hedgy, is, does it live, does it live near water? Like, does it live near a, a lake or perhaps near a pond? Ah, it doesn't live near water. Okay, so question number seven, my seventh question is, does it live in the forest near here, near our house? Ah, it lives in the forest near our house. Mm -hmm. And Hedgy, does it come, does it come to our garden sometimes? Okay, so it comes to our garden to visit you. <laughs> okay, is it your friend? <laughs> okay. Mm. Hedgy, does it come to our garden in the summer? 
in the summer. Ah, so we don't see it in the summer. Hmm. Hedgy, does it come to our garden in the winter? Ah, so we see it more in the winter. Hmm. So how many questions is that, Hedgy? Ten questions already. Okay, so my eleventh question, question number eleven, is does it like eating wiggly worms like you? Ah, okay, and question number twelve, my twelfth question, is does it like eating snakes and frogs like you? No, it doesn't like eating snakes and frogs. Well, you're happy then because you like eating snakes and frogs. <laughs> I think I know what it is. Do you know what it is? Hedgy, question number 13 is, does it have a red breast? Is it red in front? Uh, I think I know. I think it's... A robin. Ah, I won. That's only 13 questions. Na, 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 na. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. You will win the next one. In England, where I come from, we love robins. There is an organization called the RSPB, which means the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds, which says the robin is the favourite bird of the British. It's not an enormous bird, it's about 14 centimetres long. So it's about the same size as a great tit but it's actually bigger than a little blue tit. But of course, it's a lot smaller than a blackbird. Robins are famous for their flashy red breasts, but they can sing too. In fact, they sing all day. They must be quite happy creatures. Most British robins stay in Great Britain all year. But some Scandinavian robins from the north of Europe migrate. They fly down south in the winter because it's too cold up north. In England, we often see robins on Christmas cards. This is the Christmas card my mum sent me this year. And that's because we associate robins with the winter, because we see them more in our gardens in the winter. We see robins in the garden, but here we see them in the forest too. Last week, we saw two robins when we were walking in the forest with Mandy. But I think they must be a little shy too, because they like living or looking for food under hedges and under bushes. That's why they have big black eyes because they need to see in the dark. And do robins live in groups or are they a little more solitary? Like the cheetah on the savannah in Africa. Well, we often see robins alone in the garden or in the forest. You probably know the Peter Rabbit books by Beatrix Potter, who lived in the north of England. Well, there was a robin 
who liked living in the garden where Peter Rabbit ate all the radishes and the carrots and the cabbages. But I think the robin preferred eating the wiggly worms that came up when the gardener was digging in the garden. And is there only one type of robin? One sort of robin? One kind of robin? Well, I didn't know that there are lots of sorts, lots of kinds, lots of types of robins in the world. Not only the European robin we see in England, there's a robin in America, the American robin, and he's a lot bigger than the British or the European robin. And there's the scarlet robin. The scarlet robin lives in Australia and Tanzania, and he has a red breast, like the European and the American robins. But not all robins have red breasts. There is also an Indian robin and he is sort of black or brown and he has red under his tail. The Indian robin lives in countries like Pakistan and Nepal and Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. I would love to go there. And are robins really cute little birds? Well, they look cute and sweet, but they can be aggressive. They are territorial birds. They defend their territory, just like Mandy defends our house. But Mandy doesn't sing to defend her territory. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed this video because I had fun making it. If you did, share the video with someone else learning English. Take care and I'll see you next time.